Let's talk about the origins of your favorite glass of wine. Our story begins in the ancient times, around 6000 BC, in a region known as the Caucasus, located between the Black and Caspian Seas. This area is recognized as the birthplace of winemaking, and it's here that our ancestors began perfecting the art of turning grapes into a delightful beverage. Archaeologists have unearthed pottery shards stained with remnants of wine compounds, providing tangible proof of this ancient practice. Imagine, if you will, these early winemakers experimenting with different grape varieties, fermentation methods, and aging processes, and in doing so, laying the foundation for the diverse range of wines we enjoy today. As time passed, the culture of wine spread from its birthplace, traveling far and wide. It found a particularly enthusiastic reception in the Mediterranean region, especially in the civilizations of ancient Greece and Rome. The Greeks revered wine as the nectar of the gods, and it played a central role in their religious rituals and feasts. Meanwhile, the Romans, with their penchant for luxury and indulgence, elevated wine to a symbol of status and refinement. Both civilizations made significant contributions to winemaking, introducing new varieties, techniques, and even inventing the wooden wine barrel. Their love for wine was so profound that they even had deities dedicated to it, Dionysius for the Greeks and Bacchus for the Romans. However, winemaking wasn't just about creating a pleasurable drink, it also had practical implications. You see, water in those times was not always safe to drink due to contamination. Wine, on the other hand, thanks to the alcohol it contained, was relatively free of harmful bacteria making it a safer choice. So, the next time you sip your wine, remember its roots trace back to ancient civilizations. The rich history infused in every drop is a testament to the enduring appeal of this timeless beverage. After all, as the saying goes, in wine, there's truth. Or in our case, a whole lot of history. Fast forward to the Middle Ages, why did wine become the beverage of choice? As we delve into the Middle Ages, wine was not just a luxury but a staple. It was more than a mere accompaniment to meals, it was a vital part of daily life. A sip of wine was often safer than a gulp of water. Due to inadequate sanitation, water sources were often polluted, making wine a safer and certainly more enjoyable alternative. The church, a dominant force in medieval society, played a significant role in vineyard cultivation and wine production. Monastic orders, particularly the Cistercians, Benedictines and Carthusians, had a profound impact on winemaking. They owned vast vineyard lands and possessed the knowledge of advanced viticulture techniques. The monks, being literate, recorded their observations and techniques, leading to significant advancements in wine quality and consistency. Wine also held a sacred significance, being an integral part of the Eucharist, the Christian ritual commemorating the Last Supper. This religious importance further elevated wine's status in society and ensured a steady demand. But wine wasn't just a religious symbol or a safe drink. It was also believed to carry medicinal properties. Hildegard of Bingen, a renowned herbalist of the 12th century, wrote extensively about wine's health benefits. According to her, wine could aid digestion, restore vitality, and even alleviate melancholy. So, from quenching thirst safely, to serving religious rites, to healing the sick, wine was an essential part of life in the Middle Ages. These factors not only increased the demand for wine but also led to improvements in viticulture and winemaking techniques. Thus, the Middle Ages significantly shaped the wine industry, with influences that persist today. As we raise our glasses today, we are in fact toasting to a tradition honed by centuries of history, a tradition that began in the vineyards of medieval monasteries. The Renaissance period marked a significant shift in winemaking. But how? Let's delve into the transformation that occurred in the world of wine during this period of cultural revival. The Renaissance, spanning the 14th to the 17th century, was a time of great change and innovation, and winemaking did not escape its influence. The focus began to shift from quantity to quality. Prior to the Renaissance, wine production was largely about volume. However, this era saw a distinct turn towards the craft of making fine wine. Winemakers became more concerned with the nuances of flavor, aroma, and texture, leading to the production of more complex and refined wines. With this shift came an increased recognition of the importance of terroir, the concept that a wine's character is largely influenced by its geographical origin. This understanding led to the emergence of region-specific wines. From the sun-kissed vineyards of Tuscany to the fertile soils of the Loire Valley, winemakers began to produce wines that reflected the unique characteristics of their regions. This period laid the foundation for the Appalachian systems we see today, 
where wines are classified based on their place of origin. During the Renaissance, the world also saw the birth of a wine style that continues to captivate palates to this day, sparkling wine. Winemaking techniques evolved to allow the production of these effervescent wines, which quickly gained popularity. The bubbles were initially seen as a flaw, but eventually, they became the charm of these wines, leading to the creation of famous styles such as champagne. The Renaissance also saw the advent of glass wine bottles, allowing wines to be aged for longer periods. These bottles, coupled with the invention of the cork, transformed the way wines were stored and enjoyed, adding another layer to the wine experience. The Renaissance, thus, ushered in a new era of sophistication in winemaking. This period of enlightenment and discovery forever changed the landscape of winemaking, setting the stage for the intricate and diverse world of wine we know and love today. In our modern era, winemaking has reached new heights, but what influenced this evolution? As we journey through the timeline of winemaking, we now find ourselves in the present day, where both tradition and technology play significant roles. The modern winemaking process, although deeply rooted in ancient techniques, has been greatly impacted by technological advancements. One such advancement is temperature-controlled fermentation. This innovation allows winemakers to regulate the temperature of the fermentation process, ensuring a consistent and high-quality product. It's a far cry from the ancient times where wine was left to ferment in open-air containers, subject to the whims of the weather. Let's not forget the introduction of stainless steel tanks. These are a far cry from the wooden barrels of yesteryears. They're not just easier to clean and maintain, but they also prevent oxidation, keeping the wine fresh and preserving its original flavors. Then, there's the innovation of screw caps, a modern twist on the traditional cork. While cork has its charm in history, screw caps offer a practical solution to the problem of cork taint, a common issue that can ruin the flavor of a wine. But the evolution of winemaking isn't just about technological advancements. It's also about the globalization of wine. Thanks to modern transportation and commerce, wine is no longer a luxury limited to certain parts of the world. Today, new wine regions are emerging, from the rolling hills of New Zealand to the sun-soaked vineyards of South Africa. So the story of winemaking is one of change and adaptation, of old meeting new. It's about preserving age-old techniques while embracing modern innovations. It's about the passion of winemakers around the globe, who continue to push the boundaries of what is possible in pursuit of the perfect bottle of wine. Modern winemaking, therefore, combines age-old traditions with cutting-edge technology. As we look to the future, what's in store for the world of wine? The world of winemaking is ever-evolving, driven by the enduring passion of vintners and the insatiable curiosity of consumers. As we move forward, we can expect to see a wave of innovation and change sweeping across vineyards and cellars around the globe. One of the most significant trends we may witness is a shift towards sustainable practices. Winemakers are increasingly aware of their role in environmental stewardship, and they're taking steps to ensure their production methods are as green as possible. This might involve using renewable energy sources, reducing water usage, or even introducing biodiversity programs to help protect local ecosystems. Alongside this, there's a growing demand for organic wines. More and more consumers are seeking out wines free from synthetic pesticides and fertilizers, leading to an increase in organic viticulture. This method of winemaking not only has potential health benefits for the consumer, but also promotes soil health and biodiversity in the vineyard. But perhaps the most critical factor influencing the future of winemaking is climate change. Rising global temperatures could drastically alter the landscapes of traditional wine regions, potentially making them unsuitable for certain grape varieties. On the flip side, it could also open up new areas for viticulture, leading to exciting and unexpected flavors. In response, winemakers are exploring innovative ways to adapt. Some are experimenting with heat-tolerant grape varieties, while others are investigating novel wine-growing techniques that could help mitigate the effects of a changing climate. The future of winemaking is undoubtedly fascinating, filled with potential challenges, but also brimming with opportunities. As technology advances and our understanding of viticulture deepens, the possibilities for what can be achieved in a vineyard and a wine cellar are virtually limitless. So, as we raise our glasses to the future, we anticipate a continued journey of innovation and refinement in the world of wine.